Hey, hi, this is Mitch at Bloom Financial. I just wanted to reach out with a quick update on the coronavirus because it's literally just touching almost everywhere in our life right now. And I don't want you to go down the road here wondering really what's going to happen with the future of the economy and, and have too many worries around that. Yes, we could use some good psychological help navigating the fog of uncertainty that has so far left us with far more questions than answers. But the financial vi side of the virus is so important. What I want to try to do in this video is just offer you a little bit of help and give you more of a grip on where we stand regarding the financial markets and the economy. Because when 2020 arrived, we had the most abrupt market decline in history. And in just 23 days, we saw the market drop 34%, which is worse than we've ever seen. And now the S&P is only down 13% from its record high, and it's up about 32% from its low about a month ago. The weird thing about this, that this is so unusual, is that we have an unemployment rate that surpassed 26 million lost jobs that, uh, from a couple weeks ago. And this is the most we've seen since the Great Depression. So that disconnect is what's confusing us. And the pandemic is a situation where we're just not sure how long this thing is going to last. We're not sure if this thing is going to be coming back and we're going to have to shut down again after reopening. We're also dealing with an oil price collapse and we already had a fragile economy with the inverted yield curve that we saw happen a few months ago. So I want to set the expectation for having a pretty rough economy before it starts to improve. And I realize for some of us it might be hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel, but on a good note, we have a lot of reasons to be optimistic about the future. Uh, I'd seen an interview with Edward Lazier recently. He was uh, a White House economic advisor. He is uh, a professor at the uh, Stanford Graduate School in Finance, and he referred to the economic decline as a supply-based contraction. So in basic terms, the global economy is experiencing a contraction because businesses have had to shut down. And when they stop daily operations to stop the spread of COVID-19, that affects the economy. And a lot of economists believe that the $2.2 trillion that's been uh, put through the CARES Act and the additional $310 billion that's uh, been supplied for stimulus for small businesses is going to provide the much needed financial support for helping small businesses and those employees that would otherwise you know be normally working so because we're not spending money you know we would normally be traveling right now or shopping normally for washers and dryers the demand side of our economy has pretty much stopped and since we're not spending as much now, the businesses that benefit from our spending, those businesses are the supply side, is shut off in the short term. But economists believe that this is going to create a, a pent-up demand that's going to soak up the new supply when the economy resumes. And as history shows us, like if we go back to World War II, uh, we can see a comparable example of a supply-based drawdown to the economy. And when we saw World War II, the economy uh, dramatically increased following a consecutive years of good, strong economic growth. So when we look at this example, this leads me to believe that we can have good, strong optimism regarding our asset class models, the way that we invest, the, the extended relative underperformance of the small company stocks and the value company stocks in our funds, we would have normally a, a premium. So we'd have a, a better rate of return on a risk adjusted basis. So uh, we have seen an underperformance over the last few years and our research shows that these types of funds can be positioned for superior performance during a market recovery. The small company stocks, the value company stocks, the small value premium underperformed by an average of 3.6% during some of the worst market drawdowns in history. We go back to 2002 when we had the dot-com bubble. We can go back to the mortgage debacle of 08 
And what we saw was that the small value premium went on to outperform the market with an average of 20.5%. So as you may have heard me reference in the past, I have no ability to forecast the future. I cannot predict what the market is going to do. But it's not unreasonable to expect this type of similar outcome in the future. So obviously, I believe the path forward is very uncertain at this time. There's going to be a tremendous amount of more stock market volatility, and we just don't know what's going to happen. But based on our scientific perspective, the future leaves a lot of room for optimism and positivity. So as I mentioned at the beginning of this briefing, this is a very unsettling time. This is the most concerning moment in history on a global scale since World War II, and I completely get it if you're concerned and if you have questions about what's going to happen in the future with your investments. If you have any questions, if you have any changes with work, or you've had changes with your family, or you want to discuss your financial planning needs, don't, hesi don't hesitate to call us and get some help. You know, we're here for that reason. We want to help you make sure you get through this uh, as best as possible. So if you found this video to be helpful, please don't hesitate to share it with your friends. In the meanwhile, make sure to take care, stay safe, stay healthy, and for heaven's sakes, make sure you wash your hands. Take care. Bye-bye.